Hello and welcome. Uh, in my previous video, I mentioned that my next video uh, would be on the topic on serial communication for the AD51. I'm afraid I have to put that on hold uh, for a little while and bring you this update on the AD51 timers. In my previous video, I show you how to calculate the value that is required uh, for timer register zero. And this value that we load into timer zero is actually the length or the duration of the time delay that is required by the main program. In our case, the time delay required is 50 milliseconds. And if we convert 50 milliseconds to its uh, hexadecimal equivalent, we would have 3C B0 hexa. And we need to copy this 3C B0 into the timer register. Let's briefly go through the code. So the first line here uh, basically set timer 0 to mode 1 and then copy 3C XR into timer zero high byte and then copy B0 hexa into timer zero low byte. Remember, we're using the MOV instruction to do this. And also a quick reminder, the timer register is basically con uh, consists of two 8-bit uh, register. And then the next instruction here basically will set P1.2 to a logic one. And then we call the delay, which is this subroutine here. This subroutine will make use of the timer register zero to complete this task. When the task, the subroutine is finished, comes up here, clear P1.2, that will set it to a zero. And then call the delay again. And then it jump, S jump here goes back to this and repeat itself and it will keep repeating this uh, code here and we should see this sort of effect on the um, P1.2 so you have 50 milliseconds for a logic 1 and another 50 milliseconds for the logic 0 and the program will keep repeating and we will see a series of uh, pulses like this on P1.2. However, I noticed when I was doing the first demonstration uh, in the previous video, now instead of getting a regular pulses of equal uh, time delay for a logic one, which is 50 milliseconds, and a 50 milliseconds time delay for a logic zero, instead of getting this regular pulses like this, I noticed that we are getting this, where the, fifth, where the logic one delay, the length of the delay is 50 milliseconds, but for logic zero, the time delay value is slightly longer. Now let's take a, a look, closer look at the code again. So here, very quickly, we set timer zero to mode one and then load the value three C hexa into uh, timer zero high byte, B zero into timer zero low byte, and then set P1.2 to a one. Now we call the delay. This is your first uh, call. Uh, with this, with the three CB zero in timer register zero. So uh, it, the subroutine will complete its task, comes back here, set P1.2 to a zero, and then it would do another call to the time, to the delay routine. But if you notice that the first delay call here would have altered the timer zero uh, register contents. It is no more three zero B zero. And hence, that's why the, uh, the length of the delay on logic zero is slightly longer. So instead of getting this regular pulses, like we expect, 
we are getting this where the delay on the logic zero is slightly longer. Let's move over to the demonstration and take a closer look at it. Okay, um, so I've uploaded the demonstration code into the Kyle IDE. So uh, we go to project, we clean the targets, and then we rebuild all targets. Uh, the good news, zero error, zero warning. And then go to debug, start the debug session. Click on OK for this. And uh, just a reminder how I got this uh, performance analyzer panel so you go to view go down to uh, analysis windows and then you have your performance analyzer you click on that then the logic analyzer basically the same go to view analysis analysis window select logic analyzer click on it and you should get uh, the logic analyzer. So let's go back to the performance analyzer. Doesn't matter which we tap, but I would prefer to start with the performance analyzer. So let's let's run the program, the code. Yes, it's running. And if you notice in the performance analyzer, you click on the delay, and you will see the minimum time is five. 50 milliseconds that's okay now the maximum time is about 65 uh, 0.5 or nearly 66 milliseconds and the average time is showing about 50 57 58 milliseconds run about there okay now let's take a look at the logic analyzer output uh, let's stop it for a while and we take a look at the logic one output uh, i have measured this uh, earlier so and i can tell you it's about 50 milliseconds but if we now look at the logic zero the duration of logic zero it is obvious that it is uh, longer than the uh, logic one and I did measure it earlier, it's about 66 milliseconds. Now, so we now need to go back uh, to uh, revise the code such that the duration of, uh, of the logic zero or the length of the logic zero is about 50 milliseconds. Okay, so the solution as we've seen in the demonstration is to include uh, this two instruction here that will reload the uh, hex value 3c hexar into timer 0 high byte and copy b0 hexar into timer 0 low byte that would uh, reload the uh, the timer register values before returning back to the main program and get it ready for the second uh, call to to the delay subroutine okay so let's now look at the uh, other example that i've used in my uh, previous video that is the one second uh, delay using the timers okay so let's take a brief look at the uh, one second uh, delay uh, code uh, so here is the main part of the uh, code so the first instruction uh, set p1.2 to a logic one and then call a one second uh, delay subroutine which is this subroutine here this subroutine in turn will call the 50 millisecond subroutine which is shown here so this whole portion here is the 50 millisecond uh, subroutine 
and here before the subroutine returns the control back to the calling subroutine I've inserted or uh, in a I've repeated rather the uh, copying this 3c into timer 0 high byte and b0 into timer 0 low byte so basically I've inserted it here prior to the return to the sub uh, calling subroutine so he, in the, in effect this will reload the timer register with the correct value so let's head to the demonstration now okay so uh, we're back in the Kyle IDE and I've uploaded the uh, one second uh, delay code here so um, I'm just going to run this thing uh, and then look at the results so um, we clean the targets rebuild all targets no errors no warnings that's good sign go to debug start the debug session evaluation mode we click OK uh, let me just adjust this bits here all right, so um, let's do a run and um, okay, so it's running <clears throat> and you look at the performance analyzer, <clears throat> the maximum time is one second. Yeah, maximum time is one second, minimum is one second. <clears throat> the average is, I uh, hope you can see it is uh, 0 0.9897, 0 0.99. So it's basically almost the uh, one second. So that's good. So let's take a quick look at the uh, logic analyzer the output and there you have it so we just stop it and you can see uh, without measuring the, the time um, without measuring the, the 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 rise time and fall time you, you, you see you can basically tell the for logic one and for logic zero the uh, the time the delay is uh, e equal without measuring it but uh, we can tell from the performance analyzer it's uh, one second so that's it for this demonstration okay so that's it for this uh, particular video uh, I'll be um, back again uh, with a video on this Serial, com serial communication for the 8051 and uh, thank you for watching uh, see you again soon bye